Hello, I'm Afali. So, it's been a month since the last devlog. Honestly, not too bad. First of all, big announcement. My game now has an official name. I'm gonna just pretend like you don't know what it is already. It's called Entwine. I don't know if it's gonna be permanent, but I think it's pretty good. So, we'll see. Okay, let's start with what I did right after the last devlog. I think I spent about a week after the devlog making a dialogue system. And not a normal one either, it's kind of a different one because it doesn't stop the gameplay when it's running. I did it like this because I wanted to have a lot of little small talk and like just random remarks and I don't want to stop the flow of the gameplay just for that. So I'm gonna be using this system for little remarks like that and then I'll make a second dialogue system for important story stuff. I'm so glad that my game has twice the amount of dialogue systems. And I recorded a little bit of my thought process before and after I made it, so um, here's a little bit of that. So, I'm coming to you live from Godot. Uh, this is a first for my devlogs, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm working on the dialogue system right now, where they like kind of do a little bit of small talk, just... Yeah, so the problem right now is that... Um, the, they they appear on top of each other, so um, that makes it a little bit hard to read, you know. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, that's my problem right now that I'm trying to work out. So my idea is that when they're overlapping, one will move above the other, so I think that would look pretty good. Uh, so to figure out which one I should move, I'm gonna give them an ID. So like if it's the first text block to spawn, then the ID will be zero. And then if it's the second, it'll be one. So that's how I'm gonna determine which one to move. So that's my situation right now. So I'll check in later, I guess, when I figure it out. Okay, uh, new update. I just finished with my uh, dialogue and it's all working great. It's um, it looks really good now here. I'll show you There it is see they're not on top of each other anymore, which is great Oh, and also I added the I made it flip um, To go the other way when you're close to the edge so that you can still read it, which is also really cool I think this is a uh, oh I died <laughs> What was I saying so yeah, um that this concludes the live update from me Back to your regularly scheduled um, pre-recorded voice lines. After that, the next thing on my list was to fix Jay's pathfinding AI. And that's where I ran into a little bit of trouble. What I wanted to do was to have Jay follow the player around in like real time. And the problem with that is that it is unbelievably complicated to do. There are zero tutorials on this subject. For, for Godot at least, there's probably at least one for Unity because there's a Unity tutorial for everything. I could not find any resources at all for this, so I was on my own. I started off trying to hard code it, but that just did not work. There were too many problems. So I tried to switch to using Godot's built-in A star pathfinding node, but that was also just not working. It was a mess and I, honestly, it was it was just too much. I couldn't do it. But I mean, it was on my list. It was the most important thing. So I had to finish this before doing something else, right? Here's me from the past talking about this. And I think you'll be able to tell that I was not having a good time. Okay, we're doing another live update, but this time just voiceover because I can't be bothered to start OBS. For the past like two weeks, I've been trying to put together an algorithm, pathfinding something to make Jay follow the player in a way that isn't garbage and that he doesn't get stuck on walls and stuff all the time. And I just, I can't do it. It's just, it's too complicated and it is killing my project because I know that I am really want to do this and so whenever I open up my game, I'm just thinking, all right, today I'm going to work on the pathfinding system, but that just stops me from wanting to work on the game. It's killed my motivation. So this is a difficult choice to make, but I've decided to throw away the pathfinding system. So I really, I really wish that I could do it, but it's just, it's not gonna work. And if I keep trying to do this, I'm like 99% sure that I'll end up giving up on my game. So I don't know where I'm gonna go with this now. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to move Jay around, but I just think this is the right choice to make, even though it is kind of disappointing. It's either this or I quit. So, yeah.
Now, what you saw just now is a little thing we call in the biz overscoping. It's talked about a lot in the game dev community, but if you don't know, overscoping is when you set goals and you want to achieve things that are just way past your way past what you're capable of, whether it's because of time constraints or just programming skill or anything. You just set your goals too high and then you just crash and your game just dies. And that was the absolute last thing I wanted to happen to cancel my game. So I, ha I was forced to cut it out. Once I decided that I didn't want to deal with the AI system anymore, I took a break from trying to code Jay's AI, and I decided to do something else. And that something else was a rat. I put a rat in my game. What I mean by that is, it's not just a random rat, it is basically the tutorial. So this rat is just gonna walk around and like give you little button prompts and stuff. And for the first time in a long time, I had fun working on my game and I wanted to open my project, I wanted to work on it. And so in the span of like three or four days, I had done so much more than what I had accomplished in the last two weeks. Oh, by the way, the rat's name is Tutorat, Jared Tutorat. <laughs> so yeah, that's canonical. Um, that's the rat's name and it will have no significance at all in the full game. I just think it's fun. So after I finished working on the Tudor rat, I still knew that I had to work on Jay's AI, but I still felt like I didn't have enough steam to go heads down on it. So instead, I just thought, what do I want to do right now? What would be the most fun thing for me to add into my game? For a little bit there, I couldn't think of anything, but then I played a game called Satellite Dreamer. And I had already played this game before, actually before I started working on my game. And side note, I think it might have actually been a big inspiration, but like subconsciously, so that's pretty cool. And so I replayed Satellite Dreamer, and I really liked the rocket jump mechanic in it. It was, it was a lot of fun. And so I thought about it a little bit, and I was like, maybe I should add something like this into my game. And then I had the idea to combine it with the hook. So basically, I put a bomb on the ground, and then you can hook onto the bomb, and the bomb will come flying towards you. It will explode on contact and just send you flying, absolutely launch you into the air. Once I got that idea, I could not get it out of my head. I mean, I just loved the concept of it. And so next thing I knew, I was putting that into the game. At first, when I made the explosion code for the bomb, it would just take the direction to the player on contact and then launch you in that direction. But that setup didn't really work the way I wanted it to because as you can see in this little test scene, when I grab the bomb and it comes towards me, it actually goes too far and hits me in the side and ends up launching me downward. So that is not the intended effect. So instead, what I ended up doing was recording the direction that the player hooks the bomb from and then reversing it and launching the player in that direction once it touches the player. And that worked a lot better. And so at that point, I was like, this is amazing. I love working on my game right now. So now it's time to work on my AI. But since I'm having so much fun right now, it'll be a lot easier to motivate myself to do it. I had to come up with a different solution for moving Jay around because having him follow the player's movements like real time, it's just, it's not possible for me. So instead, my new solution was two parts. First of all, I have a path node for every room in the level and these path nodes have a list of positions in them. And so Jay's code is to look at the path node for the current room and go through each of the positions and just walk towards the next one. And then once you reach it, look for the next one and walk towards it. And if you need to jump, then jump. And to make it a little bit more natural, I made it so that when Jay is near the player, he'll stop following the nodes and just stand next to him. This is of course a simplification. It was not nearly that easy to write or to figure out in my head, but it works, it does its job, and it wasn't impossible to do for me. And so yeah, that's all I've done for the past month. I didn't technically get a lot done this month, but I think I learned a lot about the way I work. I used to feel like I had to follow my list in the very specific order exactly the way I had to, but it's just, it's not like that. That workflow does not work for me, and so I'm gonna change it, and I feel like this is gonna work a lot better for me. So yeah, that's the lesson for today. All right, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Oh, and there's one thing I want to mention. I checked my analytics recently, and about 10% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. 
And I don't know how this happened because I specifically request at the end of every single video that you do not like, you don't subscribe, and you definitely don't hit the bell. But 10% of you do it anyways. Yeah, not cool guys. Let me just reiterate, do not like, don't subscribe, and absolutely, please just don't ever hit that bell. Absolutely not. But yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching and bye.